by the Susquehanna River, well, within a couple miles, that the river uh, I found is very interesting and a an interesting life source for many different things, not just people, but not just animals, but fish, but also our, our farmland and how it, when, when it floods, it helps uh, nutrients into the, the rivers or into the land around. And I, I don't, I think we often look past that what's that what we have right here in the summertime you see many people out in the river either uh, fishing or uh, boating but river really the river is a year-round sport um, there's people that are out there doing trapping there's people out there doing waterfowling there's people out there kayaking in fact i'm amazed at this time of the year how much how many people are out there on the river right now so mm -hmm. i've had this uh, passion uh, living along the river and watching it how powerful how influential it is uh, it's just uh, uh, just amazing to see uh, the changes too. As I look at some islands on the river and how they have changed over the years, they may, maybe used to be a hundred yards long and now they're thirty yards long. So that evolution and is changing. We might often look at things don't change, but the river is constantly evolving. It's amazing how most everything, especially here along Susquehanna, ends up in the Chesapeake. And so living here in Montana, I might even just wash my dishes and think, hey, that soap suds and that is going to the treatment plant, but then eventually it's going to be drained into the river. So whatever nutrients or even chemicals that maybe we don't want there. Maybe we look at a chemical that is very mild, hand soap or stuff that uh, we don't necessarily think could hurt the environment. But in the long term, it does, it could change the water quality, it could change the uh, turbidity, it changes the, you know, the pH of the river, which everything relies uh, very intrinsically on the biology of the river and its chemistry makeup. You know, might see in the spring runoffs, it gets muddy and then it clears up after a storm. And, and all that affects uh, downstream and where it's going. So really, as a homeowner, uh, mowing my yards, uh, changing my oil in my car, everything that I do could, you know, end up in the Chesapeake. And I, I think that's important. People might have homes along the river or summer homes or just boat. And then when they see something, let's just say it's something, something's contaminating that little stream that's going into the river. A lot of times we look at, some people might just say, okay, that's, that'll just dilute, well, you know, one part in a million. But really, when you think about it from the beginning of the tributary all the way to the bottom, if all those little things add up to something big. Let's see, I'm gonna call him, I'm gonna call John to see about, have you ever seen this before? Because I am constantly saying to myself, never saw that before. Or I never thought about that before. And so it's uh, our responsibility to take care of that.